We're looking here at questions five through eight. These are multiple choice questions from 2015 Chem Regents exams that I put under the category of solutions. We're starting with question five. Part one is a separate video, check it out. Okay, so for question five, it says the concentration of a solution can be expressed in. When I'm dealing with concentration, there's a couple of different ways um, that we can look at this. And if I just go back to reference table T, on reference table T, under concentration here, there are two different um, formulas. One is parts per million, and you'll notice it's mass of solute over mass of solution. And one is molarity, moles of solute over liters of solution. Let's see if that helps me at all. So if I go back to the um, original equation here, sure enough, there it is, moles per liter. Concentration could have been in percent possibly or parts per million also, but that wasn't one of the choices. So the answer here is uh, choice four for question five. Let's take a look at question six. All right, so after being thoroughly stirred at 10 degrees Celsius, which mixture is heterogeneous? If it is heterogeneous, it means it's not going to look the same throughout. And how are you supposed to know this? Well, you can't just look at the choices. You actually have to go to the reference tables and find what's called the solubility curves. In other words, we need reference table G. Now, it's a little bit of flipping back and forth, but the first thing that they told us was that we were at 10 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this in. And by the way, when you're working with reference table G, my suggestion, especially when it comes to the exam, it's your reference table to use for that exam. Mark it up. Don't be afraid to. You know, it's a lot of times when we're dealing during the school year, your teacher might say, oh, well, you know, don't write on the reference tables. But really, for solubility curves, I think it's best to write on them so you can see what the heck you're doing. Okay, so what you need to do now is to start to put the information here from the choices on the reference table. And I'm going to do the same with you. And the first thing is I want you to notice that for the y-axis here, that solubility is grams of solute and 100 grams of water. If you take a look at all four choices, they're all in 100 grams of water, so that's good. So that's going to make things a little bit easier. Next thing is we need to find the different salts and where they would be on reference table G at 10 degrees. So 25 degrees of KCl is choice one of uh, 25 degrees, I'm sorry, 25 grams. So 25 grams of KCl choice one would be about here. Okay, KCl is higher than that. So I'm dealing with choice one with an unsaturated solution of KCl because it's below the line. I go to choice two, and it's 25 grams of potassium nitrate or KNO3. 25 grams, well look at that. I'm right on the line here for KNO3. So I would say that's a saturated solution for KNO3. 25 grams of NaCl, well it's, I'm looking at the same point now, just looking at the different lines. Here's NaCl. I just got to follow it. It would be up here. So again, unsaturated. And finally, for choice four, it's 25 grams of NaNO3. NaNO3 is way up here. So again, unsaturated. Well, it looks like we have our answer. Our answer is going to be choice two. Um, where we have a saturated solution, it means we have the maximum amount of solute in that 100 grams of water, and any excess is just sitting at the bottom, which makes it look different throughout. So if we go back, there it is. Choice two is our answer. Move on to seven. Which ion combines with barium ions to form a compound that is most soluble in water? Okay, so for this solubility in water, what I have to deal with is reference table F. So, again, mark up the reference table. I'm dealing with barium ions. 
and I want to know what's soluble. First of all, this column is for soluble. Exceptions mean insoluble. Then on the other side, we have insoluble. It's just so weird the way they wrote this, and then exceptions are soluble. All right, so let's see. We got sulfide ions and barium. So here's sulfide ions in my insoluble chart. Most of the time, any ion bonded with sulfide is insoluble, but there are exceptions. But guess what? Barium isn't one of the exceptions. So choice one is not my answer. Let's move on to choice two, hydroxide. Well, here's hydroxide. I'm going to just switch it to red so you see it. Here's hydroxide. Typically, hydroxide compounds are insoluble, except for these exceptions where they're soluble, and there is barium. So it looks like, for choice two, that's my answer. Let's go ch through choice three and choice four anyway to make sure that we're absolutely sure and you see how to do this. For choice three, it's carbonate. Carbonate's up here. It's insoluble. Barium is not an exception, so it's not choice three. And finally, sulfate, SO4. Well, sulfate is here. It's under the soluble compounds column. So usually sulfate compounds are soluble. However, barium is an exception, so it is not choice four. So therefore, if I go back, my answer was choice two. Finally, question eight. We're dealing with an aqueous solution. We have a mass of 490 grams containing 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3 grams of calcium atoms. And notice we need to calculate parts per million. So I need to go to reference table T. And here is that parts per million. Let me erase this. Here is my parts per million equation. Mass of solute over mass of solution times a million. So I'm going to go back. And what I need to do is the mass of the solute was the calcium ions. So don't let the scientific notation fool you. 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3. That's divided by 490. Right? For the solution, that would contain the 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And i got to multiply that by a million. All right. So you need your calculator here. It's up to you whether you want to take your um, 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3 out of scientific notation, but you have to realize that that's a pretty small number. So you go ahead, you divide, and then you multiply by a million, and you should get an answer of 17 parts per million. Okay? Um, and again, let me show you. 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3 is the same as sliding the decimal over 1, 2, 3 spaces. So it's 0. 0.0085 divided by 490 times a million. Try it. Make sure you get choice 3. Keep working hard. Good luck.